I've noticed a new influx of Godot users, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to make a video on how C++ can be implemented into Godot. In order to use C++ in Godot, you need to use a technology called GD Extension. GD Extension is Godot technology similar to Unreal Engine in that it lets the engine interact with the native shared libraries at runtime. That means on Windows you're compiling a DLL, which is essentially injected into Godot so you can use the nodes that you craft in C++ in the engine. So what do you need to get this running? You're going to need Godot, obviously, a C++ compiler, which can be MSVC, Clang, GCC, etc., Python, and the scons as a build tool, pip package, and a copy of the Godot CPP repository. First of all, you need to install Python, and with Python comes the pip package manager. So once you have that set up, go to your environment variables and ensure that it is set up correctly. You can tell that it's set up correctly by going into the path variable and seeing that you have Python and Python scripts in here as entries. This will allow you to access Python and pip through your CMD, your terminal. Next up is to install the scons pip package. So as we can see here, scons is the name of the pip package we need to install. So if we come over to our shell, all we should have to do is run pip install scons. If you get an error while doing this, make sure you have your Python scripts path variable set correctly. Now we need to install git if you don't have it. So come over to the git website and install the 64-bit for Windows setup and that should automatically set up your environment variable for you. But just in case it doesn't, it should be set in either your system or user path variable. Now just in case you don't have a C++ compiler, you can go over to Visual Studio Build Tools and install Build Tools for Visual Studio 2022. And make sure to select the C++ desktop package when installing the build tools. This will install MSVC on your system so you can compile C++ files. So now we're going to actually set up our folder structure before we get the copy of the CPP repository. So make a new folder. Go ahead and name it whatever you'd like. But for this, we're going to go just GD, GD extension example. Now that we have that, let's open it up and make our folder structure exactly like I'm doing because it's going to need to be the same as this because I'm going to provide the S construct file, but you can modify the S construct file. So download the S construct file that I have linked in the description, paste it in here. And if we open up the S construct file here. We can see that this depends on our folder structure looking like this. So it's going to place a shared library in the demo slash bin folder called libgd example. You can change these to whatever you'd like. So demo is going to be our actual Godot project. So now that we have this set up, we're going to come over to the um, Godot CPP repository, select the branch that you need. I will be selecting 4.1 because this is the branch that I'm using. Copy that. Then come over here. We can close that out. Open in terminal right here. Now we have that. We go git clone and paste in that. It looks like we haven't gotten the branch on this, so we're gonna have to manually switch the branch, which is fine because it's really easy. So now that that's in there, we can see we have our Godot CPP repository. So we simply cd into that, git branch. As you can see, we're on the wrong branch, so let's go git switch 4.1 switch to a new branch 4.1. So if we call git branch again, we're obviously on the correct branch now. So now that we have this set up, we can come into Godot CPP and just open terminal again. 
And as you can see here, there's another S construct file. And we're going to use this S construct file to craft our static library or our C bindings. And that's what we will use to call functions to make our actual shared library GD extension, GD extension plugin. So just call scons platform equals windows, or it can be Linux or Mac OS. So call that. And if you have your MSVC compiler correctly installed, it should successfully create that static library in this um, bin folder, which will be here in a moment after this finishes compiling all these files. So now that that's done, we can refresh this folder and see that we have a object file library dot lib. That is a static library. So it's going to be built into the binary of our shared library over here. So we can't actually make our shared library yet. We're going to need to put some code in our source folder before we can do that. So let's go ahead and start coding. So I've went ahead and coded my files because I don't want this video to be too long. So we can just go ahead and go through these. GD example dot H and dot CPP are going to be my nodes. These are going to be the custom nodes that will be placed in the engine after we compile our shared library. Register types dot H and dot CPP is what's going to initialize our module and define our entry symbol. One more thing that I've done is I've thrown in our .gd extension file in our bin folder. This is what actually tells the engine that we have a gd extension that we need to load. And this defines our entry symbol as you can see here, example library in it is our entry sim symbol compatibility 4.1. And if we come over here, we see example library in it is here, which registers the example module, which registers the class GD example, which is our custom node. So you can see how this all ties in together. This here is just what I've copied from the Godot docs. It defines all these shared libraries that could possibly be in there, but if you're on Windows, you don't really need any of these. Um, you just need these for testing. So now that we have that, let's go through this. Everything in Godot is under the Godot namespace. Actually, first of all, let me say that Godot C++ is essentially has feature parity with GD script. So if you know how to do anything in GD script, you're going to know how to do it in C++. Um, besides a couple things, which I'll explain. So we're going to need to obviously include the files that we need. And here's some include guards set up here, not 100% necessary, but you know. Um, so we have our namespace then we define the name of the node and what it inherits. And then here we have our GD class macro. This is similar to the Unreal Engine generated header or generated body, I mean. You don't really need to know what, how, or why this works, but you just need to put it there at the beginning of every class declaration. Now, what this node is actually going to do is just move a sprite around it with some sine and cosine functions, defining some time passed and amplitude members. As you can see here, we have our process function. This is the virtual function that we can override. This is the same as the process function in GD script. Constructors, this is just used to initialize some members. So if we come over here, we can see that all our constructors doing is initializing our time passed and amplitude member variables. If we go into here, we can see the bind methods function is setting up some properties that we can use in our editor. This is essentially using the export annotation in GD script. This is essentially doing the same thing. It just takes a little bit more effort. 
So we're going to have an amplitude property in our editor after setting this up correctly. And keep in mind, even if you don't have any properties you want to export, you still need to define this bind method static function in every node, or else you'll have some errors compiling. So in our process function, um, just copy paste this. This isn't really important. This is just what is going to move around our sprite. And then what I have here is a engine uh, editor hint boolean, which makes sure that our process code is only being ran outside of the editor. Because in GD extension, you can have code run inside of the editor. If you don't have this set up, it's going to run the code inside of the editor and possibly break stuff. Because at the end of the day, the Godot editor is just a game, and GD extension doesn't really know the difference there unless you do this. Then we have our getter and setter functions so we can properly implement our property, or our, yeah, our property. So after we have all this set up, we should be able to come into our project and see that our extension plugin is properly loaded. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention though is you do have to run scons of course before you do that, but I've already done that. Um, so if we come into here, run our scons, access is denied because it's open, one second. Run scons again. We run this, and of course, it builds our shared library in our demo bin folder. And here's our DLL right there. So then, after we have that set up, we want to come into our engine and confirm that it's working. As you can see, it's not moving right now, but we do have our amplitude property here. I've set it to 29. You can just reset that real quick. And we can see it's moving around. So this obviously works. Let's just set this to 42. And it's moving a lot more. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.